أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله أوله بلا أول كان قبل وآخره بلا آخر يكون بعد الذي قصرت أن رؤيته أبصار الناظرين وأجزت أن نأته أوخام الواسفين ثم الصلاة والسلام على سيدنا ونبينا حبيب إله رب العالمين أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وآله التيبين الطاهرين المعصومين المظلومين والعنة الدائمة على آدائهم أجمعين من الآن إلى قيام يوم الدين أما بعد أعظم الله جورنا وجوركم والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Our condolences to our Imam of our time Hujjat ibn al-Hasan al-Askari and also to all the lovers of Ahl Bayt alayhi salam to all my dear viewers who are watching this program on this sorrow night which is the shahadat of Babul Hawaij Imam Musa Kazim alayhi salam Imam Musa Kazim alayhi salam the seventh Shia Imam is also known as Babul Hawaij which means that the door to the desires and the hajat for us this title became very famous for the imam because of how he would attend to the people and respond to the people in Medina it's been reported that imam had two doors one was a door was in the front and the door in the back and usually the back door was always open to any time those whosoever have any need have any desire would attend to the imam and also it's been reported that after the side after the sad martyrdom after the sad shahada of the imam his chamber his grave site his shrine became the door of fulfillment of desires and it stands as of today as well the life of the seventh imam is quite uh, unique as they say that he was the imam for the longest period of time compared to other imams his imamat period was about 35 years which seems to be the longest compared to all the other imams for about 20 years he was in the service of his father as we all know the sixth imam his the renowned personality of the sixth imam how influential he was for the entire ummah for the entire islam that we have or that we have remained today is indebted to the sixth imam whether that be the school of shafi'i maliki hanbali or hanafi they are all indebted to our sixth imam for enhancing them with jurisprudential principles with islamic knowledge that they themselves eventually started to carry out ishtihad and form their own schools for about 20 years the seventh imam imam musa kazim alayhi salam was in the service of imam jafar sadiq alayhi salam imam musa kazim alayhi salam's mother who was a moroccan origin origin was also a very renowned and pious personality who have definitely contributed in the purity of the sixth imam as well when we look at the period the political period uh, at that time we find that imam have attended or imam faced uh, about six tyrannical khulafa sajjah who was known to be the most furious the blood sucking uh, khalifa of that time because the period is where we are seeing the downfall of the Umavids and the coming to power of the Abbasids so it's a time where there is a lot of turmoil everyone who is about to lose the power want to be extremely furious extremely you know bloodthirsty with the want to rule with the iron fist so that they could save the power and the tyrants and the oppressors and the khulafa who wants to come to power once again responding or trying to come to power with the iron fist as well so it was saja and then after that it was mansure dawaniqi who was also a very uh, cruel 
cunning a figure in the Islamic history who have even brought Imam from Medina to Baghdad and as soon as Imam was summoned basically forced to come and there is that very famous dua of Imam Qasim salam that we have in Mafati and also in other dua books which reflects that unique uh, understanding of the Imam in regards to Tawheed, in regards to Tawheedi principles. That dua is fascinating and amazing. Highly recommend to be recited on the 25th of Rajab. Mansur Dawaniqi summoned the Imam with the intention of killing him. When Imam entered Baghdad, he himself went forward and welcomed the Imam and mentioned that I had a dream of uh, Amir al muminin of Ali ibn Abi Talib. And in this dream, I saw that he was reciting a verse of the Quran. And then after the, right after that, Mansur inquires the sixth, seventh Imam. He says that, are you going to revolt against me? Then Imam replied that I have no such intention of revolting against you. The Khulafa were always in fear of losing their power because their Khilafat was not on the hearts of people. The Khilafat of the Masumin, the Khilafat of the Imams were on the heart of the people. They governed the heart. They were the rulers of the heart because of their Sifat, because of their qualities, because of their behavior, because of their akhlaq, how they were, because of their knowledge. As we all know that the scholars who lived during the lifetime of the seventh Imam, they praised the Imam. He was known as Salih. Another title of the Imam, of the seventh Imam, is Salih, the righteous one. He was profoundly known for his spirituality, for his generosity, for his knowledge, for his enduring patience. You know, one of the names that we call him is Kazim, which means that comes from Kazm. He would, he would refrain from getting disappointed or upset or angry. He would control his anger. As the Quran says that he would control the anger and he will afi, he will forgive the people. Always forgiving. And it really reflects that how Muslim the Imam was. Majority of the time of his life, he was he left in very dead and dreadful and dark prisons. History is, uh, is, is self-evidence where we, when we visit Baghdad, those who have the opportunity to visit Baghdad and those who have visited these prisons, you could find that these prisons, when a person enters to these historical sites of the prisons of the Imam, one is unable to even stand up properly. One is unable to really stand up properly. You know, that's how Imam was praying there in those sort of very thin, low roof prisons. Imagine how he might have been breathing there. Right. So now Mansur Dawaniqi was the Khalifa as well. And after him comes Mahdi Abbasi, who was also a very fierceful, very dreadful, you know, Khalifa, very tyrant. Then Hadi Abbasi and then Harun Abbasi, the Harun Rashid, who was the main culprit and who was the person in charge for the martyrdom of the seventh Imam. So we see about six Khulafa, one after the other came and they persecuted the Alawiyun, the followers of Ahl Bayt, the Imams. Imam have trained students, Imam have maintained that that level of knowledge, uh, that seat of knowledge which Imam Jafar al-Sadiq had and he had you know, propagated and promoted the same knowledge. He has carried it on. I mean, this was a very crucial period from Imam al-Sadiq to Imam Rada salam. You would find that it was intense for the Imam and for the uh, followers of the Imam. 
you know, to really propagate and to really teach. But Imam managed to really transfer that to the eighth Imam. And then when it comes to the eighth Imam once again, who was known as the alim -e Ali Muhammad, the knowledgeable one of the alim -e Muhammad, the scholar of all Ali Muhammad, right? Because of the debates that the Imam have. So how did Imam really maintain that? You know, and he transferred this knowledge and he maintained that air of, of the Imams and the Ahl Bayt and the Bani Hashim being the most knowledgeable one, even after thorough persecution. Now, as we move further in regards to his title as Babul Hawaij, I was mentioning earlier, he is known as Babul Hawaij also because of the divine inspiration or revelation that took place and that was the imam says that allah wanted to send the wrath and the azab on the people on the followers of ahl bayt but imam exchanged this to himself so he took that sort of uh, uh, that sort of uh, you know, uh, he exchanged in return of his suffering. You know, he said, I would rather suffer, but not my followers. I would rather suffer, but not other human beings. That's why we see intense, you know, imprisoning of Imam. As they say that, Kahrash Asujun, you know, which is transferred, translated as in Persian, you know, zindane sa cha a dark well, a dark well like a prison. You know, it is like a well round, and it's very deep down, and it's very dark, and it's very tight. You know, it's small well. In that, Imam was prison there. You know, Harun Rashid was trying to check where is the Imam. You know, he's in this zindan, in this prison of dark well, down underneath, he couldn't really trace the imam. The guard said, you know, gaze, look very carefully. Do you see that? He says, yes, it's just a cloth. He says, no, that's not the cloth. But that is the imam doing sajda. And he has gone so fragile. He has gone so thin that... Harun Rashid thought is just a cloth. The amount of zulm that Imam uh, have gone through in these prisons, in these prisons, are really um, uh, you know undescribable. One cannot really describe. Now, as we see that Imam have trained uh, great scholars, Hisham ibn Hakam, a great theologian, you know, who was very young and who was, you know, taken as, under the wing of the Imam and was trained by the Imam. Uh, then you have Yahya ibn Akhtin, another scholar, you know, who was trained. Yahya was also trained. And many of them were, uh, were planted within the ministry, uh, with the uh, execution of taqiyya. Imam have asked them to do taqiyya and to be in the ministry and support the followers of Ahl Bayt because the intensity upon the Sadat, upon the Sayyids, upon the followers were so strong, right? was, was so powerful that they were persecuted, that there was embargo, you know, and as you uh, know that the, uh, the, the Sahm Sadat that is seen uh, in fiqh uh, from Imam Jafar Sadiq points out to that embargo, that sanction against the Sayyids that were taking place. They were not given jobs, they were not given uh, you know, um, uh, permission to buy lands and plots and they were secluded and persecuted. Then at least through this means that they will be uh, you know, aided. You have the element of the Sami Sadat being introduced during uh, that period of the sixth iman that we find immense amount of riwayat and traditions. 
Now I just wanted to point out to the intellectual aspect of the Imam, uh, not to take much of your time, and that is there's a very beautiful hadith, a very long hadith uh, in, uh, from uh, Hisham ibn Hakam, one of the greatest theologians. There's a lot of things to mention in regards to him as well and how he debated, how he challenged great scholars uh, by going to Baghdad, by going to different Basra, by going to different places and he challenged them. And he promoted the phenomena, the ideology, or the thought of uh, imamat and vilayat, you know, by, by defeating them. Right, like that famous, in that big masjid of Baghdad that he goes, a great scholar sitting on the pulpit and he's explaining. And then he says, I have a few simple questions to ask. You know, uh, you know, what do you do with your ear? What do you do with your eyes? What do you do with your mouth? You know, these, the scholar was saying, what are you, uh, you know, why are you asking these silly questions? He said, why, why don't you answer it? And eventually pointing out to where does this all commands come from? All of these commands comes from the aql. So aql is that, you know, reality of imamat. You know, how can this whole creation be left without that sort of intellectual reality where the whole creation is guided towards, whether this little creation of our is guided by our aql the same way. Then that's how he introduced imamat in big gatherings. Now there's a very beautiful hadith from the seventh imam in regards to um, uh, in regards to uh, from Hisham ibn Hakam and that is in regards to Aql. They say, Imam says that, you know, there is two hujjat. One hujjat is hujjat daruni hujjat dakhili internal hujjat, internal proof and there is another hujjat which is hujjat which is outside. The internal proof, the esoteric reality or the internal reality or the proof is the intellect of man. Aql of man is considered as hujjat from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there is external hujjat which is which are considered to be the imams, which are considered to be the anbiya, which are considered to be the prophets and the messengers of God. Now there has to be a correlation, there has to be a relationship if the internal aql it goes or makes an error, then you have the external aql which will really rectify it and correct it. That's why we say that Islam is a religion of fitra. Islam is a religion of aql. You know, there's a very nice hadith uh, which comes from the Imam and says that Hazrat Adam was offered three things. Hazrat Adam was offered aql. Hazrat Adam was offered deen. Hazrat Adam was offered haya you know, shame, modesty. So Hazrat Adam chose aql. He did not choose religion or he did not choose uh, um, haya because it was the best choice. When you choose aql, right, the deen comes with it and also haya, modesty, shame also comes with it. That's why there's a nice aql on nas the most intellectual individuals, Amirul Mu'mineen, are, are, are those who have haya. So that means intellectual person will have modesty, will have haya, will have shame. Unfortunately today, when we look around, we live in a very shameless society. We live in a very uh, shameless, uh, you know, there is no haya, there is no modesty in this, civil, in this modern civilization. Right? So what this points out to that this modern civilization lack in their intellectuality because it is an indication a modest person will be an intellectual person. So if a person is not modest, then he is not intellectual. He does not have aql. The sign of intellectuality is manifested, is reflected through modesty of a person. Right? That is why when you look at it, you know, the ahkam that we have, how, you know, modest uh, are we supposed to behave, the mannerism that we have, the akhlaq that we have, all indication of haya. And where does this really haya comes from? It comes from that aql. So therefore, Imam Qazim is saying there are two hujjat. One is that aql, which is 
Daruni, which is in us that we have, and then there is Aql, which is outside, which is the Hujjat of God, which is the proof of God, because there is a possibility of the internal Aql being influenced from outside. The internal Aql making an error. If that internal Aql makes an error, then you have the Imam outside. Because that is why Qiyas in our school of thought is not considered as a valid methodology in our in jurisprudence. So therefore, Qiyas is your opinion, your intellectual calculation. But there is Hujjat which is outside. Yes, Aql is one of the Hujjat. From those four, you have the Kitab, you have the Sunnah, you know, you have the Taqreer Masum, Qawl Masum, you have the Quran, right? And then Aql as well, and consensus, which is the Ijma. So Aql is one of them that is there. But if this Aql goes against the Hujjat, it is not accepted. So you have the Aql Daruni, you have the Aql, which is internal Aql, then you have the Aql, which is outside. And these, they, and both of them needs to be in, uh, in harmony for reaching or for that plight towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The emphasis on, on intellect, the emphasis on knowledge, the emphasis on mannerism, on adab, that's what Ahli Bayt the Imams promoted and showed in their, in their, in their akhlaq, in their behavior and approached things. That's why, you know, Imam is known as Kazim, who controlled that, who had hilm, which is one of the qualities of God, who had hilm. And at the same time, the, uh, the empathy that the Imam had, where he took the, uh, you know, who he, he, he took the suffering of his own self, you know, so that others may not suffer. They say that when Imam was taken into prison by Harun Rashid, he was persecuted and eventually to the extent that there are different uh, narrations that we have, but one of the most famous one in regards to his shahadat was that he was given that poison. When Imam was given that poison, all alone in that prison, and as they say that whenever the Imam suffers, they remember their grandmother. Fatima to Zahra Salamullah alayha. Imam Hussein alayhi salam the same. Imam Radha alayhi salam the same. Imam Musa Kazim alayhi salam. Because Hazrat Fatima to Zahra Salamullah alayha is hujjat upon the Imam. She is the point of reference. Imam given that poison and he is suffering and eventually nobody there to really aid and assist the Imam in this prison all alone. Where is Imam Radha? Where are others, the close ones? And he dies and when he dies, when he becomes Shaheed, the body is covered with the cloth. And two guards were called to really lift the body and to take out of this prison to another chamber. When they wanted to lift the body, they said that it is so heavy. Why is this, so, why is this body so heavy? When they remove the cloth from this body, they saw the Imam in chains. This was the only Imam who was prison and who became Shaheed in chains. Other Imams were given poison. Other Imams became Shaheed by sword or by poison. But other Imams, when they became Shaheed, they were not in chains. The seventh Imam, while the poison was given in chains and his rule departs his body while he was still in chains, his body was brought and put another chamber. They said, we have to take this body outside because they are Rafidis, because they are lovers, they are Shias waiting outside for the news of the Imam. So they say that what are we going to do with these chains? They say cut the chains. They started cutting the chains. Imam's body is there. They took the body outside and they placed it on the bridge of Baghdad so that everybody should come and look at the body of the Imam and look at the body that there are no wounds. Imam has not been hit. Imam has not been persecuted. Imam died 
natural death. That's what they wanted to portray because there were a lot of revolts taking place at that time. You know, there is a great family member of the Imam uh, who was known as Shaheed, uh, who became Shaheed as well by revolting and other revolts were going and also many started believing that the seventh Imam is the twelfth Imam, is the last Imam for some reason. So they wanted to show the body of the Imam that this man have died. He is no longer there. The leader is no longer there. The whole, you know, uprisings that is supposed to take place should not take place. So they brought the body and they put it on the on the bridge of Baghdad. Have we ever heard that any Imam's body laid there under the sun for three days, people coming and they say that as the love and dedication and loyalty to the Imam was so much that people started bringing flowers from different places, placing near the body and the smell of flowers, the fragrance of flowers was circulating in the whole of Baghdad from very far and that hour comes as well when Imam Rada salam moves forward takes the body takes the body gives the ghusl and buries and we also remember another body which was the body of Abu Abdullah Hussein salam this body also was for three days on the bridge but that body was three days where in the plains of Karbala without any head on its body and at the same time the ziyarat nahiya of the 12th Imam which says that my salutations my salutation to that Imam who had no head on his body and who have no covering there was no covering. They have looted everything, even the ring. If they want to loot that, they have chopped the finger of our Imam Hussein alayhi salam. La yomuk yomuk Abu Abdullah. There is indeed no day like the day of Abu Abdullah al Hussein alayhi salam. Allah Dhanatullah ala qom al zalimin. Sayalamu al ladin al zalimu. Ayyamun qalibin yan qalibun. Bi Fatima ta wa abiha wa baaliha wa baniha wa sir al mustaudir fiha. بمولانا باب الحوائج يا الله 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 يا رحمن يا رحيم يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوبنا على دينك يا قاضي الحاجات يا كافي المحمات إنك على كل شيء قدير والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Bye. Uh -huh.